Hello, this is Dr. Ben Finio here with some of my coworkers to answer a common question I've been getting on two of my other Zoom tutorials. Now I have one tutorial on using dual monitors in Zoom and one on what gets recorded in Zoom, but I did not test those at the same time. So what happens if you record a meeting while using dual monitors in Zoom? Let's find out. So let's start out by looking at the Zoom dual monitor layout. And if you haven't watched my video about dual monitors in Zoom, you might want to go watch that first. But a quick recap here. Now, to be clear, what you're looking at now is not being recorded with Zoom. I am recording my entire Windows desktop. You can see you can still see the taskbar down here with a third party screen recording program called Camtasia. I have a separate tutorial for that linked in the description. But what the Zoom dual monitor setting does is it actually gives you two Zoom windows that you can click and drag to rearrange and resize. So I can swap these between monitors if I want to, and I can also put them on the same monitor if I really want to. So what people have been asking is, okay, what exactly gets recorded here? Is it going to follow one of these windows and just record what's in that window? Is it going to record everything that appears on one monitor? Or could I somehow swap between these and decide which one I want to record? So I'm going to test this by recording this meeting and moving the windows around. Then we're going to take a look at the recording and see what actually shows up. Now I am going to do a local recording. So I'm going to click record on this computer. There are some slight differences between local and cloud recordings, including an option in cloud recording to get gallery speaker and shared screen views all in separate video files. That option may be disabled by your organization. I actually can't enable it. So if you do want that option, you might have to check with your IT admin. But for now, I'm just going to click record on this computer and we're going to cycle through some different options and pinning people and moving the windows around and things to see what gets recorded. So I'm going to select record on this computer. I get the little notification up here that I have started recording. And for example, let's see what happens if I just drag these windows around. So here I have them both on one monitor and then I'm going to swap them and move this one over to the other monitor. So in the recording, we'll see if it followed one of the windows or if it just recorded everything that was on one screen. We can also experiment with pinning people. So for example, if I right click someone, I get the option for which screen I want to pin them to. So I can pin Mr. Google's here to my first screen. And if I remove that pin, then I can pin him to the second screen. I could also pin him to both screens at the same time if I wanted to. What's interesting, I'm going to remove pin from second screen there. So right now, Zoom considers my left monitor here the first screen and the right monitor the second screen. But if I swap these windows, you'll see that it's not actually the physical monitor, it's the Zoom window that it considers first and second. So now, if I right click Mr. Google's again and select pin to first screen, I have him pinned over here on the right hand monitor. So again, Zoom is considering this window, whichever screen this is on, to be the first screen and this window, whichever screen this is on, to be the second screen. So one more thing we're going to test, screen sharing. So I prepared a PowerPoint file, and I have two other videos that are all about screen sharing and using PowerPoint with Zoom, but we just wanna see real quick what gets recorded when I'm sharing one. So I'm going to select share screen, and first I'm going to tell it to share just the PowerPoint file. So when I click share, Zoom switches to screen sharing mode for me. You see that actually is going to close one of my Zoom windows in dual monitor mode. So if I go down here, I only have this gallery view window open. I've lost that second window with this single speaker view. And in theory, I can still move this around so I can drag it in front of the PowerPoint. Right now I've told Zoom to only share the PowerPoint. So in theory, the recording should only have the PowerPoint in it and it should ignore this window. But if I stop that share, I can also choose to share my entire monitor. So I'm going to share this entire monitor here and say now Zoom is recording anything that appears on this monitor in theory, so I'm not quite sure what'll happen if I drag this window over here, if it's going to also record this, or if it's only going to get the PowerPoint and ignore the Zoom window. So let's stop the share, stop the recording, and see what we got. So now let's look at the recording, and this is an interesting one. It appears that it didn't record gallery view. So even though I was in gallery view in my one Zoom window, it recorded the active speaker the entire time. I was the only one actually talking. So it recorded me except for that brief moment when I pinned Mr. Google's. So I could be wrong on this and maybe this is something to contact Zoom about, but it looks like dual monitor mode does not record gallery view like it will if you are in single monitor mode. So 
You can check out my What Gets Recorded in Zoom video, and you'll see that there, what shows up in the recording does depend on whether you are in speaker or gallery view in your main Zoom window. However, here, even though I was in gallery view, it looks like it recorded in speaker view the entire time, except at the very end when I was screen sharing. There, it did record the shared screen view with the thumbnail of me in the corner. Now, we can also see that what showed up in the recording when I was screen sharing does depend on whether I told Zoom to only share the PowerPoint or to share the entire monitor. So, when I was only sharing the PowerPoint, and I've, I've muted the narration here so you can't hear what I was saying before, but I dragged the Zoom window in front of this and it still only recorded the PowerPoint. However, if I skip ahead to the part where I was sharing the entire monitor and I drag that zoom window over, you can see that does show up in the recording. So you have to be careful with your windows because you might accidentally block out what you were trying to share if you are sharing the entire screen. So that wasn't quite what we expected, but while we're at it, let's test this with one more new zoom feature, multi-pin and multi-spotlight. So this can get kind of confusing when you have two monitors going because if you click on someone, you get the options to pin them to the first scene, pin them to the second screen, and then once you've pinned them, you can remove pin from the first screen, you can also pin to the second screen, you can add somebody else pinned to the first screen, you can replace, so there's a lot of options here. This gets kind of complicated, but I'm gonna try and cycle through some of them. So again, I'm going to start out in gallery view. We're going to start a local recording, and now I'm going to pin just Mr. Google's to the first screen. I'm also going to pin Mr. Moose to the first screen. So again, I have another feature on this multi, sorry, I have another video on this multi-pin and multi-spotlight feature. So now we have two people pinned on the first screen. We wanna see if they both show up in the recording. I'm going to pin one of them to the second screen as well. So now we just have people pinned all over the place. We'll see who shows up. And here I'm going to remove Mr. Google's pin from the first screen. So now I have Mr. Moose pinned on the first screen. Mr. Google's pinned on the second screen. We'll see which one of them shows up in the recording. And you'll see you can't actually pin multiple people on the second screen. You're stuck with a single view there. So if I right click Mr. Moose, I have a replace pin on second screen option. I don't have add pin to second screen like I did with the first screen. So I'm going to swap them out. Now I have Mr. Moose pinned on both screens and let's see what happens if I pin Cookie Monster on the first screen here. So again, not totally sure which screen it's going to follow here. Let's stop the recording and find out. So looking at the recording, again, this is not what I expected. It looks like it only recorded me unless I pinned somebody to the second screen. So as I advance through the recording here, you'll see I get to the point where I was pinning people to the second screen and they will show up as the only video in the recording. So the whole multi-pin people or even pinning a single person to the first screen does not affect the recording. It looks like when you're in dual monitor mode, it's only either the active speaker, if nobody is pinned, or the single person that you have pinned to the second monitor who shows up in the recording. You'll see at no point in this recording do I have two people showing up. Again, there's where I switched to Mr. Moose, but I never got both Mr. Moose and Mr. Googles or Mr. Moose and Cookie Monster side by side, which is what I would have expected from having them both pinned or being in gallery view. So this is honestly the first one of my videos where I'm not sure if I have a good answer. It does not appear that it's possible to record gallery view while you are using dual monitors in Zoom or to use multi-pin to get a recording of two or more people. I could be wrong on that. I'll try to contact Zoom about it, but from what I tested, I could not figure that out. So my best advice, if you need to use dual monitors to do a recording, is to test it first. If you have multiple devices, like a laptop, a tablet, and a phone, you can just log into the Zoom meeting as yourself multiple times. That is how I make these videos. If you don't have enough computers or devices to do that, try and recruit some friends and family to join your Zoom meeting, do a test recording, and make sure you get what you intended to record, especially if you're doing an important event, like a birthday party or a wedding or something, you really wanna make sure that you record what you wanted to record and you don't go look at the recording after the event is over because then you really don't get a do-over. So again, this can be confusing with all these different iterations of all these options. So do a dry run, test it, make sure you get what you want in the recording.
So as always, I hope you found that video somewhat helpful, even though this one didn't have as many clear cut answers as most of my other tutorials. You can find a link to all of my other Zoom tutorials in the description below this video. If you have a question, a comment, or a suggestion for another tutorial, please leave a comment below the video. Thank you.